And we export to uh, yeah, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, France, uh, Sweden. I think uh, roughly a hundred thousand kroner. Very critical pitch. Now we start with a new video. This uh, video uh, for a successful experience uh, in Trondheim in Norway. And I like this experience. And it's for uh, medical uh, equipment. And uh, we make, make here uh, something like uh, assisted. Uh, um, welcome in uh, Harvard. Thank you. You will come. Uh, this is first uh, podcast uh, to Gazar, and uh, I think it is the first podcast for me in English. Okay. So it's uh, I have a little bit uh, challenge. Uh, so I will ask you: uh, uh, Can you introduce uh, yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is uh, Halvor Wall. I'm uh, 36 years old. I uh, am. Uh, I I went to engineering school, so I'm a, what we call a civil engineer. I did first a bachelor's of um, of automation engineering, and then I did a master's in uh, from the school of entrepreneurship here at NTNU, uh, combined with. Uh, uh, the technical courses were within uh, cybernetics, so robotics, uh, things like this. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. I will uh, say thank you for uh, this uh, uh, podcast, and I, I am very happy for make uh, uh, something new in uh, our factory here. Uh, so I will ask you about your project here. Uh, how, when you start? why you are start with uh, assistive what is this production and uh, what do you think about this okay yeah so um back when i was uh, attending the school of entrepreneurship we started up with this idea of uh, having a new type of uh, device uh, designed to be similar in features as uh, a rollator is but for the staircase so it started uh, as a student project, and then we created uh, what we call an AS in Norway, which is a, a, a stock traded uh, or a stock based company. Um, basically, with the idea to commercialize this uh, product that we made some prototypes of uh, during our student years, uh, which uh, is the product Assistep. Um, in 2015, we uh, got investors on board. Uh, we finished the development of the product, which was a very intense process. Um, and then we started the commercialization of the product. Um, so today we're selling to many different countries. Mm -hmm. We have our production here in uh, Trondheim, as you know. Uh, and we export to, uh, yeah. Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, France, uh, Sweden, UK, and other countries. Um, and uh, also, we're uh, on the Norwegian tender contract with NAV for the, the category of uh, mobility aids for, uh, uh, for stair climbing. Uh, NAV support uh, many people here in Norway, so it helps with Spain. And uh, maybe with building the product or uh, just to Spain and help? Um, yes, yeah, so actually, uh, back in the very early days, uh, we did uh, also get some uh, research funds from NAV, uh, I think uh, roughly 100,000 kroner. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in the early development uh, phase uh, to get some money to build prototypes and start to, to do some research on the product together with users. Um, today, uh, NAV is a, uh, our customer, our main customer in Norway, because most people who, who get the product installed uh, in Norway get it funded through the NAV system. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, <coughs> did you go through difficult and uh, challenge during your uh, foundation uh, assistive? 
Yeah, a lot of challenges. I mean, the, uh, the company could have ended at so many different uh, time points, but uh, we've managed uh, to get on, uh, up until this point, uh, especially the, the early years is critical. Uh, you don't have that much funding. Um, you're really, you, you have to succeed on the project plan and to reach the kind of the, the steps in, in the commercialization phase in order to be able to create a sustainable business from it. Uh, so typically for a startup in Norway, uh, you have the, the you have many years of, of uh, running uh, with a, a neg negative net income uh, in order to reach uh, higher revenues where you can uh, run a sustainable business. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start, are you start uh, alone or start with uh, group or team? Or yeah, how so you start this idea? It would uh, have been uh, quite difficult uh, as a one-man project. So we were luckily a team of more people, uh, three founders of the company, myself, Ingrid, and Eirik. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, some other students on board on the project in the early days as well, some industrial designers, mechanical uh, engineers, things like this, in order to, to work on the, especially on the R&D side uh, in the product development phase. So uh, doing projects like this is, uh, I highly recommend finding a team with uh, uh, capabilities that match your own. So you have, you have kind of all the competency areas you need uh, covered uh, throughout the team. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, how you get uh, employee and uh, customer? And this is a difficult... Uh, yeah, it's a very critical phase because uh, in, in our case, we it was a new product, mm -hmm. uh, so we kind of had to build up the market from scratch. So that me meant that uh, during the second half of 2015, when we started to launch the product, we had to go out on the road, uh, visit a lot of... Uh, municipalities and occupational therapists every single day to show them the product, do demos, so that they know that it exists, uh, and then start applying uh, for the product through the MAP system. And it's a critical phase, and it took uh, more than six months from uh, we started with the first road trip until we had the first sale through NAB. Um, in the in the between time, we were uh, highly uh, dependent on the investor backing we had at that point. But also, we started uh, selling through some easier customer uh, channels, which were rehab clinics and nursing homes. Um, they are uh, less bureaucratic than uh, the NAV system, of course. So it's uh, it was a possibility for us to get some early customer uh, experiences. So you can start getting the word of mouth effect. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a good uh, thing. Uh, can I ask you about uh, engineering encyclopedia? I speak about this idea a lot in the factory. So what do you know about the engineering encyclopedia? What do you have information about that? What do you think it will be after uh, one year or five years? Um, I really don't know what it will be in one year or five years. It's uh, up to the P to the people who is uh, running that project, I think. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, as far as I know, it's a good project in order to learn more about uh, technical drawing, mm -hmm. 3D printing, 3D modeling, things like this. Mm -hmm. As you can see from the Niederstuhlman you have here, mm -hmm. and uh, for myself. I have a good feeling when I am um, uh, sent this uh, product for the Netherlands or this plan, uh, Netherlands or German, <laughs> this plan in the Norwegian language. So I like this product here. And uh, I think it's uh, my first uh, delivering here in Trondheim. So it was a challenge for me. and. Uh, I was working 
too much to make uh, something very different. Yes. So, about uh, the freelancer, how do you have experience uh, like freelancer people? I've never worked as a freelancer, no. Uh, but uh, also tech as a company, we've used uh, uh, different freelancers for different tasks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything from uh, creating marketing material to uh, to uh, maybe help on the R and D side, uh, yeah. So uh, we use uh, several different platforms if we want to hire some freelancers for short term work, mm -hmm. typically where we don't have the competency in house. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what is the most important uh, point? that the project must have uh, in order for uh, it to be successful? So in order for a project to be successful, there's a couple of things I think is quite important. Uh, number one, if you're working together uh, as a team, it's important that everybody uh, working uh, on the project has, a, has the same idea of what is the, the goal of the project. Mm -hmm. So that people are not uh, dragging uh, in different directions. So having a clear goal is quite important. Uh, having the right resources available. So if, depending on which project it is, you need uh, typically some some staff with different capabilities that can run the, the project and that can cover the different roles. So having a clear goal. And having the competency in the project team that you need in order to reach that goal is uh, is critical, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, for the new student, uh, for mechanical engineer, and you have a long, long uh, of experience uh, in the world and like a, a manager and something uh, for dry, drive a new company in Trondheim. What do you have tips for the student uh, uh, mechanical engineer? I think during the studying year, it's uh, quite important not to just attend uh, the regular classes, but to find uh, either projects or extra co uh, curricular activities that you can take part in, that the student organizations, uh, maybe a part-time job or something that can uh, get you out of just uh, uh, having your head down in the, in the books. So you need some practical experience uh, working together in team, mm -hmm. things like this. I think it's really valuable during the student years. Um, it will also make it easier to, to get a job when you're f finished with your studies. If you have some, some other experience than just from the school bench. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the praxis? Practice? Practice. Uh, yeah, so during like having a part-time job, you mean during yeah. the studies? Yeah, it's a really um, maybe not for everyone, but uh, but uh, I would uh, like myself during the five years I studied, I had a a part-time job, um, so I think it's good to get the experience of having to make your own living, mm -hmm. uh, and I work together on different teams and together with uh, different types of people. It's a really good uh, and important quality when you go, when you're finished with your studies and go out in a regular job. Mm -hmm. Do you have any question? Yeah. How, where is uh, engineering encyclopedia in five years? Oh, it's a difficult question. Uh, I think, uh, like PayPal, it will be uh, a big. Uh, very big dream. Uh, then uh, it's it will be for everyone, not just for me. But I start, but there is a lot of uh, people. They will continue. Maybe I am in the plan. Maybe I am out of the plan. I hope. Say a lot of things. Yeah. Good. I mean, uh, you you uh, you need to set high goals and uh, and dream uh, in order to succeed. I mean, 
uh, if you don't have like a, a vision or a, a, a clear goal in your head where you want to be in let's say three or five years it's uh, makes things more difficult so you need to have a, a clear perspective on where you want to develop uh, the project mm -hmm. For myself, I think maybe it will be uh, like uh, one company in every city, like Siemens or another company. But that's my dream. I don't know what will be happening in the next five years or the next ten years. If you work hard, then anything can happen. Yes, I Bring, hope so. Bring in good people and work really hard, then uh, you can achieve a lot of things. I hope that. So uh, I I will finish this uh, podcast uh, and I will uh, say thank you very much for everything and thank you for this conversation and uh, uh, thank you for the audience and uh, see everybody in next uh, podcast bye bye.